12. The Night Beat starts right now. The Northside ISD District 3 trustee is behind bars tonight after she was arrested, accused of driving under the influence. An affidavit we obtained details what led up to Dr. Carla Duran's arrest early this morning. Yeah, and it's several traffic violations were noted, including not having a rear tail light, swerving on and off the roads, and at one point almost hitting a concrete barrier on I-10. The arresting officer also says in the report they smelled alcohol and her speech was confusing. Police say she refused a breathalyzer and blood test at the scene after she wasn't able to follow the instructions of a field sobriety test. An NISD official says they have no information on the arrest tonight. Duran currently being held in the Bear County Jail on a $1,000 bond. All right, briefly switching gears to a check at the weather. First outside with live cam here this Sunday night. Temperature in the upper 80s, even a few low 90s still out there this 10 p.m. hour. Of course, this follows yet another triple digit day that we saw here in San Antonio and across a good chunk of South Central Texas. Now, as we look ahead to your Labor Day tomorrow, still expecting another triple digit high, about 100 degrees by 5 o'clock. It's also going to be a muggy start in the upper 70s. I think we see a few morning clouds and then plenty of sunshine <laughs> takes back over by lunchtime. So hot and dry conditions expected tomorrow. Fire danger is also going to be elevated. So that's something to keep in mind as well. And as high pressure takes back over through the upcoming week, we still have more triple digits in store. So we're going to get you a look at all of those details coming up in just a few. All right, we'll see you then, Mia. And as Mia just said, they're not out of the woods yet when it comes to the high temps, and that certainly means wildfires still a problem. They are raging all over the state, especially out in East Texas. There were more than 20 active wildfires burning in Texas today, but we want to focus on one about an hour north of Houston in Walker County. The Game Preserve Fire has destroyed more than 4,000 acres in just the past three days. And while evacuations have been lifted, crews have only been able to contain that blaze by about 60%. The fire had gotten so out of control today that the crews from a Florida, a Florida Forest Service had to step in to help those firefighters contain the flames. Thankfully, no reports of any injuries or homes being lost. The cause of that fire remains under investigation. Back here in San Antonio, biologists are on high alert as this ongoing drought dries up the rivers that some animals call home. Fortunately, the San Antonio area has federal safeguards in place to make sure those creatures don't die off in extreme drought. The night team's Camilla Juarez tells us how you can help and do your part to protect these rare species. Kitano Rochelle paddle boards at the San Marcos River daily, and he's noticed the drought take its toll. Well. For the first time ever, my paddleboard roughed up the rocks. Less water, less flow in the river also means less space for critters living underwater. So as the water retreats, essentially the animals retreat with them. The Edwards Aquifer Authority Refugia Program breeds and houses endangered species in San Marcos, just in case the species dies off in a catastrophic event like a severe drought. This drought is affecting endangered species. Um, but not to catastrophic levels. Biologists aren't worried about the Texas blind salamander for now because it hides in the Edwards aquifer. Scientists are growing concerned for the fountain darter fish, known for hiding and darting around. When water flow is low like it is now, water temperatures can rise, algae can grow, ultimately affecting the plants that the fountain darters call home. These changing conditions can really impact fountain darters because it's reducing available habitat, it's reducing the types of plants that they associate with, and uh, potentially reducing things like food and oxygen availability. Texas wild rice is exclusive to the San Marcos River, but now it has less space to spread its long green tentacles. Because water levels are so low, it's a lot easier for more people to stand in the river. But if you're tubing, swimming or standing, be sure not to pull on or step on any of this Texas wild rice. And if you're running in it, you're basically running through their house. Camilio Juarez, KSAT 12 News.
A touching and unforgettable moment for the mother of Robb Elementary shooting victim Maite Rodriguez. During their San Antonio show yesterday, the popular Mexican pop rock band Mana called Ana Coronado up to the stage to be honored and serenaded. Yeah, a big surprise for Coronado, who was clearly overtaken by emotion. So, oh, so grateful for that moment. She said any honor like this just brings more attention to her fight for change. Hey, although she's not here, I am. And I will never stop. I will make sure her legacy continues okay. and I will always fight for her. We got to see some amazing behind the scenes video. Coronado got to meet the band behind the scenes. Turns out Maite and the band's front man both love turtles. There was even a turtle displayed up there above the song. Well, a new law took effect this weekend across Texas. Race-based hair discrimination now outlawed in schools and workplaces. The night team's Avery Everett sat down with some of the teenagers who advocated for the law. They say age is just a number, and they say this conversation is far from over. Having the Crown Act passed, I felt like a, like a weight was lifted off of my shoulders, being able to freely express myself. The start of September brings a sigh of relief to 16-year-old Nevaeh Sage. Growing up as a black girl, um, my hair was always being discriminated against. I've always been um, shied away from wearing my natural hair out in public. House Bill 567 bans race-based hair discrimination at work, in school, and in housing policies across Texas. And it took effect on Friday. Future generations get to grow up in a world where their natural hair isn't described as unprofessional or distracting. They get to embrace it and love it and do whatever they want with it without have being reprimanded. These four San Antonio teenagers are just some of the advocates who pushed for this law. They're all a part of the Lemonade Circle, a nonprofit empowering women of color in South Central Texas. It was a lot of joy and excitement and gratitude to be a part of something. Since 2019, the Crown Act has been a proposal hoping to end hair discrimination for natural protected styles. After this weekend, 23 states have laws in place to do just that. Whether you're in schools, you're in the workplace, or out in the open community, we're going to make sure you have a place and it's appreciated. Moving forward, the question is, how will this law be implemented at on the ground? They say it's a weekend for celebration. I never thought um, something that we did would impact our, our community this much, but it did. But looking ahead, acknowledging still work to be done. Imagine how big it would be if everybody in San Antonio knew what the Crown Act was, how important it is to not only them, but to their children, to their community. That law took effect across the state on Friday, but those advocates that we spoke with say they want to see this language banning hair discrimination at the city level too as an ordinance. They say that's their next point of action. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. Now to some news of the evening. One man in the hospital and a suspect on the loose after a shooting just a few hours ago. Yeah, it happened at a home in the 1800 block of West Laurel Street, just a few blocks west of I-10. And police say it is not the first time they've been called there. An officer at the scene says they've been called to that same place several times, even once last week. Today's incident happened after a 24 year old man apparently asked to leave that home and he refused. That's when police say an argument erupted and someone at the home pulled out a gun and shot the victim in the back. The shooter took off. Police still haven't tracked that person down. The victim, we're told, in critical condition. Boverde firefighters say they had trouble pumping water from a hydrant while battling this massive apartment fire last night. Look at these images on your screen. It happened at the Anthony at Canyon Springs Apartments just before 9 o'clock. The Red Cross says nine families lost their homes in the fire and they're staying in a hotel for now. The Boverde Fire Department says crews struggled to pump that water from the hydrants because the pressure was low. Investigators say fire hydrants around the county are inspected every year, but property owners are responsible for checking the hydrants on their own property. The cause of this fire is still under investigation. One in three low income people who are menstruating report missing work, school or important events because they cannot afford period products. That's according to the Alliance for Period Supplies. That number surprised the charity wing of a local synagogue. I got to see the thousands of dollars worth of donations they collected to make sure women and girls in our city have the products they need. Tampons, pads, liners, and adult diapers. Necessary, but expensive. A box like this is about 20 bucks. Irene Burns is the vice president of the Temple Bethel Sisterhood, a philanthropic group that does a project every year. There's a lot of women and teens that need menstrual product. 
and they can't afford it. The need's so great that for the first time, they widened the scope of their project. So we said, okay, let's collaborate with all of the other churches and synagogues in the city. Let's make it citywide. They ended up collecting almost $10,000 worth of products and 4,000 in monetary donations. Soon these products will be delivered to four different organizations. The Battered Women and Children Shelter, a number of school districts, the Center for Refugees, and the Diaper Bank. These are some of the packages that we hand out to our clients. We repackage everything and put it together. Celia Medina is the Director of Development at the San Antonio Diaper Bank, which delivers packages of hygiene essentials to families each quarter. We we're able to serve 300 unique individuals a month, and the more products we get supplied to us, the more people we can serve. Most clients are mothers. You know, they're having to make those tough decisions, whether I need to buy food, diapers, period supplies. So most mothers are going to say, well, I'm going to put my needs last. They also serve teenagers who often skip school when they're on their periods. When you can't afford basic health essentials, you're, it's embarrassing to go to school because you don't know what's going to happen. The diaper bank thrilled to get the extra donations from the temple. And they've already been sorted. The drive so successful, this will be Temple Bethel's project every year. It has been what we call a mitzvah. Yes. And a mitzvah is doing something wonderful for somebody else. Women helping women who need it the most. Now, if you would like to help women and teens with this issue, you can donate to any of the four organizations we mentioned. Head to KSAT.com, where we also explain how you can become a member of the Diaper Bank. Also, speaking of period products, those are just some of the basic hygiene items that are no longer allowed to be taxed thanks to a new law that went into effect on Friday. That law was just one of more than 700 that just hit the books. We know that's a lot to keep up with, so you can find a detailed look at many more notable laws going on on our website right now. Just scan this QR code on your screen to learn more about them. And stick with us in a new edition of Spreester Sessions. We take you behind the scenes with Americana music legend Robert Earl Keane ahead of his Labor Day performance in Holotus. A sneak peek coming up in about 20 minutes. Plus, protection is exactly what the Bear County Sheriff's Office has in mind as it implements a new policy regarding fentanyl. No one has heard of the changes until now. Coming up. And disaster in the desert. At least one person has died after major flooding at the Burning Man Festival in Nevada. What some of the thousands stranded there are saying about the situation that could surprise you. Next.